Hi there, welcome to String and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight, and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. And today we are talking about feathers. This is something that I have started getting a lot of questions about, and I just thought I would give y'all a little crash course of how I've learned to do feathers. Now, when I first began, like most people I talked to, I was pretty nervous about the whole feather thing. So I started with a shape that I call a swirl paisley, and it's kind of a faux feather. And I don't mean that like in the cheater sense, I mean that in the like, it just lacks some of the terrifying things that, or things I thought were terrifying about doing feathers. So with this paisley swirl, you start with a nice curvy swirl shape and you echo it several times. And then you simply do paisleys going up the spine. And if you can do swirls and you can do paisleys, then you can do this shape. And I love doing swirls and I love doing paisleys. And so it was a lot easier to convince myself that I was able to do this motif than it was to convince myself that I could do a full feather. And you can add lots of echoes and you can do these. They mix really well with both swirls and feathers. And so you can just kind of throw one in when you're quilting and it just adds a lot. And then you can fill in with little swirls or little paisleys or little pebbles if you've got a bunch of these together and you wanna fill in the blank spaces. Now, after I began feeling comfortable with this shape, I moved on to doing feathers in a triangle. The thing that really scared me about feathers was knowing how to get that beautiful kind of ruffled look without it going crazy. And I found that working within a defined shape helped with that fear. So I was doing a kind of half square triangle log cabin quilt for my mom and decided that in half of the shapes, I was going to do these feathers and was surprised that with the piecing already providing this spine, it was a lot easier to fill in than I expected. Now, the next thing that I found really terrifying about feathers is that each individual uh, feather itself looks funny. And if you obsess over that too much, you kind of paralyze like this, like they look like funny thumbs. And if you obsess over the funny thumb shape every single time that you are stitching, you're gonna end up ripping everything out because individually each one looks ridiculous. And it's only once you put everything together that it really starts to look beautiful. And again, working within shapes like triangles or squares, just I was more focused on filling the shape and on moving around the shape than I was on how each individual little frond looked. And I was pleasantly surprised to find when I finished that things look a lot, looked a lot better than I expected. And again, note there that I mentioned I was focused on filling in the shape and that's very important when doing feathers. You want, you want to be filling in your spaces. Um, so it just almost looks like it's going to burst at the seams, um, no pun intended. <laughs> um, and that's what just gives it that fullness. So after I worked with shapes, now notice with all of these, the way I draw my feathers is, you know, if I have a spine, I make a teardrop like I'm making a paisley, and then I make the next teardrop so it fits in, and then I retrace over the bump and back down. And that minimizes the bulk of thread that's building up along my spine. But I also find that it's just easier to keep track of where I'm at and where I'm going by using that motion. Now, most recently, I finally got 15 minutes of reckless courage and tried a feather border. And I didn't know how it was going to turn out and I didn't know how it was gonna go. And as I started stitching, it went beautifully and I realized later that the reason the 15 minutes of reckless courage did the trick for doing a feather border for me was because I'd laid the foundation. I had drawn feather paisleys and then I'd stitched them and I had drawn these feathers inside shapes and then I'd stitched them and it just was building and building and by the time I jumped into something as big as a border, I had a sense of what voices to listen to in my head and which ones not to listen to. For example, I want to listen to the voice that says, make sure you're filling the space. I don't want to listen to the voice that says, oh, that looks like a funny shaped thumb. Because again, it's the overall effect that's really going to make your feathers pop. Now, when I work in a feather border, I start by stitching the spine. 
I literally, I, I don't do these on my domestic, a big border like this. Um, my throat space is too small to really be able to move the quilt for this big shape. I could do a feathered border on a small piece, but not like on a big giant quilt on my domestic. So on my long arm, I will literally stitch across um, and do one pass of thread to make the spine, and then I'll do one side of the feather and then the other side of the feather. I, there are many methods for stitching feathers. This is one that I have found works well for me. And again, I start and make a nice teardrop shape and then one that stacks right on top of it. Notice that the stacking, I like to just leave enough little curved space there that it has its own definition, but then it nests pretty quickly into that feather frond before it. And I bounce and fill. Now you can see pretty quickly I'm ending up with funny spaces here. And that's where you've got opportunities to really make those feathers kind of nest in on each other and get that ruffled look that you can change the length of your feather in order to more effectively fill in the space as it's drawn. That's the beauty of using a wavy line as your spine is that it kind of forces you in a way to get creative about the shapes. Now you'll notice they're even drawing that my retracing wasn't perfect. And when you are quilting this, especially when you're first quilting it and you're working on pieces for yourself, don't, don't go back and unpick that, if, especially if you're keeping the quilt. This is not a show quilt. We're practicing, we're learning, and it is not worth your time to deal with that because once this quilt is washed, you will not see it and definitely no one else is gonna see it. We are chasing courage and we are chasing fun. We are not chasing perfection right now. There is a time and a place to be looking for show quality quilting, but when you are learning is not the time or the place for that, okay? And it's important that you teach that voice in your head to stop comparing to show quilts because the way show quilters became show quilters is by quilting a lot of quilts that were not at shows. Well, notice this just has a lot of movement, a lot of personality. The fronds of my feathers change a lot. There, there is no uniformity going on here. Now, if you're working in a shape like a square, you're gonna get more uniformity because these points are more similar in distance. You get a lot of variety in something like a triangle where you have very small spaces and very large spaces, um, or very small spaces and then this very large space. And you get kind of an in-between effect by using a curved spine that it forces your feather to have a lot of movement. And remember, as you're quilting each individual one, your primary focus is on getting a nice curve, kind of a teardrop-ish shape, but again, not a uniform teardrop. Like This is very uniform, but they don't all look like that. But focus on a nice curve and on filling the space and just let this movement happen as you are quilting. And you will end up with a gorgeous, feather and you just might surprise yourself. So go draw some feathers today.